I stand before you, a 40-year-old gay woman who absolutely loves being gay. <laughs> being gay is the most wonderful thing I have discovered about myself and has changed my life in the most remarkable ways. But for 39 years, I had no idea I was gay. I went through many, 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 many men to get here. <laughs> I learned from an early age that having a husband was the pinnacle of success, and I wanted success more than anything. I wanted to be extraordinary. This drive turned me into a performer at a young age, and by the time I was 18, I lost touch with myself entirely. Thanks to generational trauma, I needed to prove my worth. I wanted straight A's to prove I was smart, a perfect body to prove I had self-control. When I went to an expensive private university full of privileged white kids, I wanted to be perceived as wealthy, so I hid my middle-class upbringing, convincing everyone I was a first-class snob by becoming an expert in all things luxury. My hard work and fake persona was rewarded when I started my career in the fashion industry, becoming a top buyer at a well-known department store. I left that job for another position that doubled my salary and gave me the title I dreamed of, merchandising director. I bought a Mercedes to, sh to prove to the world I was special. When I brought a random guy home from the bar and he said, so, how'd you get all this? Are you a trust fund baby? I tried to hide my excitement. I got off on being perceived as wealthy and successful while secretly drowning in debt and taking enough Adderall to kill a horse. But I was no quitter. I knew someday I would have a husband, and he'd save the day. I watched enough 90s rom-coms to know that Prince Charming was real, and I saw other girls getting huge life upgrades once they got married. All I had to do was work hard, look hot, and entertain men who thought they were smarter than me. Plus, I had my friends to satiate my need for deep connection. My female friendships were solid, loving, and rewarding. I've always had tons of girlfriends, and I'm the kind of girl who hangs out in the bathroom giving out compliments like Oprah handing out cars. You are gorgeous. Your body is amazing. Your outfit is so hot. Your makeup is perfect. One of the many signs I was gay. <laughs> In my 20s, I got super close to getting engaged to a guy I dated for eight years. I loved Tim, but what I really loved was how much everyone else loved him. We were the perfect couple, and Tim had charisma. Everyone thought he was so special. I didn't really see what they saw in him, but having a boyfriend who other people thought was special meant I was special, and that was reason enough for me. After eight years of being the coolest, funnest girlfriend and picking out the perfect engagement ring, which Tim never purchased, I found out he was cheating on me. So I left him, disoriented and pissed off that I had spent eight years trying to earn a ring and now I had to start all over. I was 28 and already too old to be single. I needed to be engaged by 30 or bust. Living in Dallas, in the middle of the Bible Belt, put the husband requirement in my face on a daily basis. I also had my Nana checking in on my marital status often, too often. When do you think you'll get married, honey? I'm not sure, Nana. I'm working on it. I thought about the details of my wedding constantly. I looked at wedding dresses. I searched for venues. I stressed myself out making, for, making plans for a wedding that I knew was in my future. I needed to make it perfect. Meanwhile, I was the Samantha of my friend group. I looked at men like little achievements, getting me closer to what I wanted most. The more men I dated, the more I knew men liked me. It was marketing research, a numbers game. <laughs> then a new crisis developed. At 33, I lost my job and all the external validation I'd worked so hard to achieve. I was broke, unemployed, and unmarried, a trifecta that made me want to die. I was way too close to being homeless. Each month, I'd frantically find creative ways to come up with rent money. Once I purchased hundreds of VHS tapes to sell on eBay, later realizing I just wasted $500. <laughs> Stress has a crazy effect on our decision-making decision skills. 
I started scoping out tall buildings with roof access just in case I needed to end it all. How did I work so hard and end up with nothing? I was following all the rules. I believed so much in my external persona, I had no idea who I was without it. I was a wreck. I was ashamed. I isolated myself from everyone so I could focus on fixing the mess I'd created. I spent the next five years studying other people who lost it all and bounced back. I listened to every podcast on business and read dozens of books on personal development. I drove for Lyft. I delivered groceries for Instacart. I did odd jobs for friends who were kind enough to help. I pivoted my career, becoming a tech consultant and ditching the fashion industry. The universe was forcing me to humble myself. I worked my ass off to rebuild. And it worked. Luckily, I bounced back. Life has a funny way of helping you out. Losing everything is exactly what I needed to look inward for the first time in a long time. I moved from Dallas to San Diego to eat, pray, love my way through my next chapter. <laughs> I spent most of my life in Texas, but it never felt like the right fit. I'm originally from Northern California, and when I moved to Texas at nine years old, it felt very Texas. <laughs> I fell in love with San Diego the first time I visited. The energy, the awe-inspiring views, the fact that women still have the right to an abortion. My soul told me this is where my people were. This is where I could be free to be the new version of me. I went to the beach every day and spent more time alone than ever before. Slowly, and with lots of therapy, I realized I didn't need a man to save me. I could save myself. I started dating again, only this time not for marriage, but for fun. I explored all kinds of relationships, poly, open, throuples. I joined a sex positive dating app called Field and started getting messages from women who were very flirty. I really liked this. For as long as I can remember, I've had this feeling in the back of my mind that maybe I could be with a woman, but I'd always dismissed it because it felt too bold and risky. Heterosexual norms played such a big role in my decision making. I had to flip a switch in my brain to allow myself to see other possibilities. When I thought about being with a woman, I got excited, like tingling all over my body excited. I went on a few dates with women and I felt safe and confident, like I could be myself instead of dancing through the performance act I put on with men. Then I had sex with a woman for the first time, and my mind was blown. This was so much better than any of my experiences with men. It was like I'd been chopping wood with a nail file and somebody <laughs> handed me a chainsaw. <laughs> Why weren't more people talking about this? <laughs> Being with a woman is the best experience of my life. I was shocked at the amount of satisfaction I'd been missing out on this whole time. Women are so sexy, sensual, soft, and way less hairy. <laughs> all of a sudden, I could look back and see clearly how gay I'd been all along. I remembered fantasizing about being with a woman when I was 12 years old, a memory that, I, that was forgotten on my quest for acceptance and gold stars. And all the times I spent convincing the men I dated to let me take them to an all-expense-paid trip to the strip club where I'd purchase lots of lap dances and look on with glee. I realized, holy shit, I'm very gay. <laughs> this changes everything. I was excited to share the, new the news with my friends, like a newfound Christian ready to spread the gospel. <laughs> to my surprise, most of them were already aware. <laughs> oh, yeah, Amber, I knew you were gay. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> to be fair, I probably wouldn't have listened and likely would have been offended. Another sign I was gay. This discovery was my rebirth. I had uncovered something that would change how I lived and loved for the rest of my life. I felt more empowered than ever. I realized that what was holding me back in my relationships was the scarcity mindset I had around marriage and the palpable desperation that I carried on every date with a man. And of course, the fact that I never really liked being with men in the first place. Surely they noticed any time a pretty girl came around and I was ready to drown her in compliments and attention. I was insecure around men because my actions didn't align with my soul. 
It's like my body was screaming at me, trying to tell me I was on the wrong path. All this time, I've been trying to fit a square peg into a very gay hole. <laughs> no wonder I was so uncomfortable. It's a gift to uncover something so key to your identity, especially later in life. But it also comes with some complicated feelings. I went from considering myself an expert in heterosexuality to feeling like an adolescent who had just discovered her first orgasm, or like a 12-year-old who just saw their first pair of boobs. There's a lot of excitement, and a lot of just trying to act like I know what I'm doing. Admittedly, I still want the gold stars, and I am sorely disappointed that I will never be a gold star lesbian. I'm excited when I find out a woman I admire is gay. I love learning about the culture and hearing stories about other people with similar experiences. I love the new relationships I'm building with other badass lesbians, one of which happens to be my incredible girlfriend who is the most smart, sexy, gorgeous, wonderful person in the, on the planet. I found my people just as I'd hoped. Compulsory heterosexuality is real, and I had no idea it existed until I went through enough challenge and loss to force me to look inward. The desperation of having someone choose me has been replaced with my decision to choose myself. Of course, moving across the country and discovering I'm gay doesn't mean I'm cured of my perfectionism. It's not all rainbows and unicorns. Well, actually, there are a lot more rainbows. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Amber Ligon. And just